Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we talk everything true crime. So today I have an update for you in the Turpin case. And for those of you who are familiar with this case, back in 2018, 13 siblings were removed from their biological parents' home in Southern California. And when they were removed, it was revealed that they had been suffering horribly at the hands of their parents. And this had been going on for decades. This all came to a head when one of their siblings, Jordan, who was, I believe, 17 at the time, actually fled the house with a cell phone and called the police in the middle of the night. Then when the police arrived, they found the 13 children absolutely filthy, reportedly malnourished, and there were also chains on their beds. So I did an update video on this case just a few months ago because we learned a lot of updates of what had happened. There was body cam footage released. There were interviews with the siblings that had taken place. So I did that update video and it was really where the kids are at now and all of these new revelations. However, since doing that video, there has even been more information released. And five of those 13 Turpin siblings who were once rescued from their parents' home in California, a home that was reported in the media and it was called the House of Horrors, five of those siblings were taken to a new home with a foster family. And now that foster family has allegedly done the same thing to those kids. Yeah, we're near the one of the foster homes where the children, the Turpin children, stayed after they were rescued. We talked to neighbors there who do not want their names on camera, but they're trying to reconcile what they saw themselves with all the reports that perhaps the county, once they took over, was not taking care of them as well as it could or should have. Watch. So that's really shocking to hear all the news, what happened behind them and then moving out and then hearing all of this after. He is talking about what has happened to the children in the Turpin family who ended up living on a foster home in this Paris neighborhood right after they were rescued from the Muir Woods Roadhouse. Sheriff deputies found them living in abusive conditions, including not being fed, or washed, and kept chained. One of the siblings, Jordan, seen here on deputy cam video, sneaked out and reached to authorities in 2018. I called because my two little sisters, they're chained up right now, mm -hmm. and they... Do you, have, do you have pictures of that? Yes. Deputies showed up at the house and saw the situation firsthand. All right, let's just uh, go ahead and detain the uh, yeah. parents. Why don't you step over here for a minute? The parents, David and Louise, were arrested that day, eventually pleading guilty to 14 felony counts. They will be up for parole in 25 years. So because this case is just so complex, rather than giving you a brief summary of what this case is and what it really entails, if you aren't familiar, I'm going to link my earlier video here, and it gives a full overview of the case from start to finish. It includes body cam footage from the day that they went to the house after the police were called. It includes interviews with the siblings. I mean, the works. So if you're new to this case, or if you just need a refresher for a comprehensive view, I highly, highly suggest watching that video before you watch this one and then coming back and watching this one. Because it's important to know the true level of detail that these kids endured previously to just fully understand how unacceptable and how awful this new update is. Then in this video, I'm going to be going into the updates of this new foster family and the arrest affidavit and everything we know so far as to what's happening with this case now. So guys, get ready and let's get into it. Tend to life with Annie Elise. Starts right now. Now, what kills me about this entire thing is that the caseworker for these children, when they were first removed from their parents' house, had said that she personally was so distraught by everything that she was going to make sure that she personally oversaw the case and their placement to make sure that this would never happen again and that they were placed in a good foster home. And not only did she not do that, but now when she's being questioned, she is not answering anything. So now not only have these children been put into a new foster home where they again are being treated horribly, but all of the money that was also once awarded to these kids has been held away from them. So they don't even have the means to build a life of their own outside of these, you know, horrible homes that they are being put into. 
A new report by ABC's 2020 alleges that since the 13 Turpin siblings escaped their abusive parents, they have been marred by Riverside County's missteps and mistakes in their case. The case captivated the nation when the Turpin parents were arrested in 2018 and later convicted on 14 felony counts. The children all had spent most of their lives indoors and hidden from the outside world. They were regularly beaten and starved, sometimes chained to their beds or put in cages for breaking house rules. Those rules included keeping their hands off their parents' food and remaining seated unless directed otherwise. After escaping the home, which has become known as the House of Horrors, the seven minors were placed in foster homes. The report alleges that in one of the foster homes, several of the children were abused over an extended period of time. And in another home, a foster parent allegedly told one of the girls that she understands why her parents chained her up. The six adult siblings were all court-appointed a public guard to manage their health care, nutrition, safety, housing, and education, but they were allegedly sent out into high-violence neighborhoods with little to no life skills. They had also allegedly been denied basic care from their public guardian, telling ABC that their guardian was often unwilling to offer simple support, such as teach them how to use public transportation, cross the street properly, and access their health care benefits. The older siblings have also struggled to find stable housing and even continue to starve. The report notes that the poor living conditions continued despite the siblings getting more than $600,000 in donations from strangers. It alleges that most of that money went into an official trust overseen by the court and hidden from public oversight. Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron said that the public deserves to know what their government did and didn't do and how we failed these victims. He went on to say that it's unimaginable to him to see the worst case of child abuse, maybe the worst in California history, and not be able to get it together to give them basic needs, basic necessities. But the Turpins are a resilient bunch. The youngest four are now in a new foster home where their siblings say they are finally happy and the rest are leaning on each other and learning to get by. Five of those 13 Turpin siblings who were once rescued from their parents' home in California, a home that was reported in the media and it was called the House of Horrors, five of those siblings were taken to a new home with a foster family. And now that foster family has allegedly done the same thing to those kids. And the foster father has allegedly essayed two of those young girls over 50 times and treated the other siblings horribly as well. But he didn't do this alone. He did it alongside his wife and his daughter. Honestly, just completely foul and disgusting. A foster family in Paris has been accused of abusing several foster children, including some of the Turping siblings. Now, three of the family members were in court yesterday. Uh, Marcelino, Lenny's, and Rosa Ogan are accused of physically and psychologically abusing nine foster children, including five of the Turpin kids. This comes nearly four years since 13 Turpin children were found shackled and starved and physically abused by their parents, David and Louise, and what authorities called a house of horrors. So I got my hands on some court documents recently that really outline the details of what happened, what's going on, and it's really, really devastating. The five Turpin siblings were placed with the Olgins in April 2018, and this was just months after they were removed from their parents' home in Southern California. This new foster family lived in a five bedroom house that was just nine miles away from the home that they lived in with their parents and which they shared, which they were then removed. So very close by as far as proximity. But now there have been arrests made, multiple arrests have been made as five of these siblings who were supposed to have been rescued have now allegedly gone through even worse circumstances with their foster parents, including two of the youngest siblings being essayed over 50 times by their foster father. So Marcelina Olguin is 63 years old and he was arrested and charged with seven counts of committing acts on a child and also charged with torture. His wife Rosa, 58 years old, and daughter Lenny, 37 years old, are accused of aiding and abetting him and also for participating in certain things. So they've also been charged in this case, all three of them now. So now let's go into those arrest affidavit documents where it outlines what's been going on with this foster family and what they have been putting these, these kids through 
all over again, guys. So the father was a creep, like the creep of all creeps, and apparently would tell the girls that they were sexy, and he would recommend that they not wear any undershirts, saying that they had beautiful skin and that they should show it. And he also reportedly forcibly kissed them and even pulled one of the younger ones on top of him. So the rest of the Olgan family is also accused of forcing the entire group of the Turpin children, the five that they had fostered, into a confession circle talk. And what they would do in this is basically admit to past behavior that their biological parents forced them to do on each other, if you catch my drift here. Now, why would they do this? I highly, highly doubt that it was an effort for some sort of therapy or healing, but rather I believe that it was because they got their own personal sick pleasure out of hearing the details and hearing the stories and having them recount what they went through. And the confession circles allegedly began soon after the children arrived at the foster home. Despite the parents knowing and having full knowledge of what these kids had previously suffered at the hands of their biological parents. And one of the male Turpin siblings, who was also fostered by this family, was reportedly singled out in all of this and was treated horribly in addition to the girls, but also even worse because he wasn't a female. Allegedly, he was repeatedly imprisoned in his bedroom, he was cussed at, he was demeaned, and he was separated from his sisters. And apparently, the Foster family also intentionally ruined all of his media devices, phone, computer, iPad, whatever it was, they ruined all of it. And all five of the children were threatened repeatedly with never seeing their older siblings again if they didn't comply with the family's wishes. One of the youngest girls, who was just five years old, was also allegedly given a sleeping pill and then forced to, sit, to stand against the wall while the defendants sprayed her with water and rang a bell in her ear. And the adults allegedly were saying to her, you don't let us sleep, so we're not letting you sleep. And they gave her that sleeping pill. They were, you know, saying this in her ear, ringing the bell. And because of the sleeping pill, of course, the five-year-old ended up collapsing onto the floor. It's just brutal. They also locked this little girl in her room for nine hours a day and then never changed her diaper, apparently. And court documents allege that they would frighten her by telling her that there were spiders in her bathroom. They would hold her in this dark, noisy, scary bathroom, which they also, by the way, put a large decorative spider on the wall at one point, and they would hold her in this room despite her panicking and despite her crying and pleading to get out. Just taking it to a whole new level like while locking somebody in a room is one thing not acceptable but like that is a certain level of you know horrible behavior but then to even go to the next level of putting a decorative spider to frighten them it's just so mean the documents go on to allege that they would physically hurt her with sandals that they had choked her threw her and one time had knocked her front tooth out because they had thrown her down several stairs the Olgins also apparently encouraged two of these foster children to fight each other, and the court papers allege this was like a version of Fight Club, and that at one point Rosa, the foster mother, is said to have actually dragged one of them by her hair so hard that it resulted in her hair being pulled out. So court documents indicate that they all pled not guilty back in December of 21. And once they were released and made bail and, you know, they're awaiting trial and their next hearing, the foster father, Marcelina, was approached by a reporter. And he they asked him if he was a ped, which you know what that means, and whether he regretted his treatment of the Turpin children or not. But Marcelino's response was simply, F you, and then he went and hid in his garage like a little coward. So how did this happen again. How did this happen again, guys? That caseworker promised that she would personally watch over this case, and instead they were put right back into the same, if not a worse, home, meaning that many of these children have never for a single day known what a life is like that doesn't include being treated this way by their parents. And think about that. They don't even know what a happy home feels like necessarily. A happy home with a dinner every night, a warm bed, love in the home, you know, just warmth and happiness. Do they even know that that kind of home exists? And thinking about that and thinking about that realization really does break my heart. Thinking about the fact that maybe they thought that they had gotten ripped away from what was a horrible home and then got put in a new home, which was, yes, hell, but perhaps they didn't even recognize that this new home was hell. Perhaps they thought that 
it was better than their original home and that this is what it's supposed to be like and this is what a normal home is like when in reality it is such a stark difference from that it's just really unsettling so the Olgin's next court date is June 6th, and this is for a felony settlement conference. Now, because so many of the children are minors in this case, many of their names are not included in this affidavit. They use abbreviations and they count them as victim one, victim two. So it's unclear if Jordan, the sibling who did call for help and essentially saved the family, had endured any of this activity. She has been very active on social media, however, particularly on TikTok, and it appears she does travel from time to time to collaborate with influencers and meet different people, so I am hopeful that she's been able to separate herself from what has been going on, but that still doesn't make it any easier knowing that her siblings have been enduring this. And where they are now, they're in another foster home, and we can only hope that that foster family is treating them right. But if the system has already failed them twice now, how do we know that that really is, you know, the reality? How do we know that they are protected and they are safe now? This is a case that's literally happening about 30 minutes from where I live. And I've always felt a very strong connection to this case. I can't explain why. I don't really know the reasons why. But because it's close by and because of the connection I have felt, I'm going to be following it extra closely. I might even go to some of these hearings if I can, if they'll allow me in. And I'm going to try and do some digging to see what the placement was for these siblings. Not that I can necessarily, you know, come to the rescue by any means, although I would love to. I just feel like somebody has to make sure that they are being treated the way they need to be treated. And although I'm not obviously the caseworker, we together can create enough noise and generate enough awareness to where hopefully we are able to make some traction and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Because now... So many of them have lived their life from the day they were born till now, not knowing anything else, only knowing that. And for somebody to foster these kids, to then just demean them and do this to them, it's just tragic. It's awful. And it's just like inhumane. And this foster family had nine foster kids. So I want to know how on earth they got approved to foster nine kids and nobody was checking up or seeing any red flags. How did this happen? How was this allowed to be happening? And how did nobody follow this particular group of siblings more closely to make sure that they their well-being was t taken care of and that they were fully happy and being loved and being treated right? when it was such a highly sensitive and publicized case, how did nobody follow up on this to make sure that the living conditions were acceptable? It blows my mind. It really, really does. And it just infuriates me. And again, it reminds me why we do this and why we talk about these cases. Because generating awareness is the only way that change will ever happen. And it's the only way anybody who's a victim in these cases will ever get any justice. So I encourage you guys to please share this video, share this link, like this video because it helps the algorithm and it'll push it out to more people and just help me generate the awareness that we need for all of these cases, but especially this one right now because it is just such a misstep and it should never have happened. None of it from the very beginning should never have happened, but especially with this new foster family, it should have never have happened and it certainly could have been avoided in my opinion. So again, I'm going to be following this very, very closely and I will keep you guys updated. Please Share, show your support for the kids and the family in the comments below if they do come across it. I know Jordan is very active on social media, so please leave your well wishes for her to pass on to her siblings as well. And let's just hope that this family and these kids are now actually in a loving environment, one that they deserve, somewhere that they have a warm bed, you know, a good meal at night and love and hugs and new clothes and just treated the way a normal human should treat another human. You know, not the bells and whistles, not all the fancy luxuries, but just normal love and how you should treat a child that you have or you're fostering or you're a caretaker of. I could go on and on, guys. So I'm going to keep you guys updated. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so that you get notified of those updates and I will keep you posted. Until the next case, stay safe.